Uh, I'm Ranjan Rahati. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Mathematics and Computer Science at St. Mary's College in Notre Dame, Indiana. Um, I've been using uh, LibreText in a couple of my courses since I've been here. Um, and I started using open resources um, back in, when I was in, in graduate school with a few of uh, my colleagues and some professors there. Um, we had developed a an, essentially an online textbook for our calculus class. Um, and we combined that with flipping the classroom. And so we were making videos and all of their homework and all their exercises were, um, were available to the students uh, on, on the website that we had created. And the students, when they would come into class, you know, they would, it was the flip class, right? So they would work on problems. I would maybe lecture a little bit. Um, and that experience that I had, what I noticed, what I learned um, in that process of flipping that course uh, when I was in graduate school is that our students um, in the flip classes, um, there, was, there was a lower DFW rate. Not as many students would get Ds or Fs or withdraw during the course of the semester. Um, as compared to, we also all taught sections of the class kind of what we, in a lecture format, and there were more DFW students in those classes. And so that kind of, um, that kind of led me to decide that I wanted to um, flip more classes uh, as my career progressed. Um, and also just the fact that the students didn't have to buy a $120 textbook for one semester uh, in a course that maybe, you know, in a subject that maybe they were not gonna continue in. Um, both of those things, the student success, the lack of needing to buy an expensive textbook, and also the ability to maybe learn a little more easily from videos than from reading text kind of led me down the, the, the OER route um, and so at St. Mary's, um, when, I, when I started here, um, there was already a push for, um, for a light board. Um, and basically what a light board is, um, I can share my screen here and show you what, kind of, what some of these videos that I made look like. Um, all right, so with the light board, I can make videos where I'm standing behind the screen and I can still write on it. Um, and so students not only see what's written on the screen and hear my voice, but they can also read my body language and see what I'm pointing at. I can point to things. I can move around. Um, it kind of embodies that, um, that classroom aspect a little bit more where they can see me doing things in the front of the classroom. Um, and then I, you know, just combining, combining all of these things, right? So combining the flip classroom, combining the light board, and then putting it on to, to LibreText made everything kind of streamlined for one of the courses, which is uh, Math 104. This is a course where students um, generally take this as the only math course, or maybe one of two math courses that they take at St. Mary's. Um, and the book that we had had for this course wasn't, we couldn't find a good book that was at the level um, of these students. The books that we had were, had a lot of problems, um, a lot of, uh, not pro problems in the sense of exercises, had a lot of good exercises for the students, um, but it, they were hard to read. Students couldn't necessarily effectively read and glean information from the textbook, um, and it was expensive. Uh, and so uh, between me and a few other faculty, we kind of made our own problem bank. We made, um, I made a lot of these videos and, um, and now students can then just watch what they want to watch through LibreText um, at their own at their own convenience. Um, so, uh, right. So some, well, along with some other faculty, we all decided to actually go bookless um, and we created a for this course. And we, so we created a database of problems and other faculty are you know, not necessarily using LibreText or not necessarily using um, the videos that I created. But once we made that choice to go bookless and um, create our own problem problem bank, then kind of everything fit together perfectly on LibreText for this. So I have, I have videos there um, for each chapter. I also put some written examples and some written notes. And then I, uh, I have some, some what I call pre-work that the students come online, they, they watch the videos and they have to do some, a few problems to make sure they kind of know the basics before they come to class. And then in class together, we work on more difficult problems uh, than the ones that they that they had access to and more difficult problems than the ones that were in the videos or in the examples on the Libra text. Um, and the whole process has worked um, pretty effectively. I've done it now for, for two classes, uh, two years in a row. Um, and 
Students are generally skeptical in the beginning. They're worried that they don't have a book. Not only do they not have a physical textbook, even on the, on the, on the Libra text, I don't have a lot of writing. A lot of it is just in the video. So they're worried about that. And they're worried about this, this format of the class where it's flipped and they can't, um, they're not used to just not getting lectured at, I guess sometimes, um, or at least as the majority of the course. Um, but by the end of the semester, most of them, um, who are skeptical at least appreciate kind of what what is being tried what is what's the, what's the goal they don't have to buy a book and they also um, understand uh, kind of why i'm teaching the course in that way and libra texas has kind of helped facilitate all of that as like a nice one stop for all of their needs for the course so you mentioned your one course that is the only course that some students take so i assume those students would be like me because I was an English major and avoided math like the plague. Um, and then the other ones I assume are for math majors. Correct? Sure, yeah. So so I have a, another course there that's a discrete math class that I'm teaching now. Um, this is for it's for a math uh, for math majors. Um, and a couple uh, I've taught it once before uh, and both times I've used LibreText for the course. Uh, before that I hadn't taught it and there was a book that was being used and again it was over $100. Um, and it's a very good book. Um, but our students were, you know, we were only doing a few of the chapters out of this thick, heavy book. Uh, and the cost was kind of prohibitive. So I did a couple of things. First, um, Dr. Oscar Levin um, also is a math professor, and he has a wonderful um, book for discrete math called uh, Discrete Mathematics and Open Introduction. Um, so thanks to uh, Delmar and the team at LibreText, that book is now in LibreText, um, just on the course bookshelf. You know, anyone can go and look at it there. But I've also uh, made a copy of that book uh, for my class in particular. We do a little bit more. We don't do some things that are in Dr. Levin's book, and we do a few things that aren't in his book. So I'm able to then go in there and edit that to make it kind of perfect for what I need it to be. Um, and so that that option, that advantage that LibreText has given me is huge um, because I don't need to come up with my own um, with my own textbook from scratch if I don't want to or if I don't have the time. Um, I don't need to reinvent the wheel. Dr. Levin's written a great book already, um, but also then I can just make it. I can make it exactly how I want. I'm not deleting anything that he's put in there because I don't. I don't feel the need to. But I've added an extra chapter on a few things that our students need for the next semester in some of their other classes. Um, and, you know, one advantage of this, a, a huge advantage of this is that um, no other, um, I know like a lot of publishers right now are coming out with, um, you know, they're asking us like what faculty, what we would want from them. Maybe if our whole department or our whole school goes with one publisher, then our students can get all their books um, for, you know, for one low cost. So that would kind of take care of the cost mechanism. But at none of these places do we have the capability of kind of editing what's there and making it our own. Um, and I mean, that's the beauty of, of OER in general, and in particular for LibreText, getting a source that's already open in one place and having the, the ability to so easily um, and basically seamlessly edit it to make it look like what I want it to look like. That's That's been really nice. And I've even taught the class, you know, a little bit differently this semester than I did a couple of years ago. Um, and so it was not hard at all to make those changes. I didn't need to go find a new resource. I didn't need to spend a lot of time or, you know, um, thinking about what I was going to do, what I was going to add or supplement my textbooks with. I just went into the Libre text and added what I wanted to add. Have you found there to be any, any difference in terms of, um, um, I guess reactions to the text between your your math majors and your non-math majors like is it would you say it's maybe easier for the non-math major? I, I ask because I have struggled with math my whole life so do you feel like maybe it's been easier for them to um, learn this way like using the light board and the and the open Text. Yeah, I do. I mean, I think one thing is a lot of the students in that class are first year students. And, you know, in the past, a lot of times, first semester of college, you come in, um, you don't have a textbook for two weeks, two and a half weeks. Well, first of all, so that that issue is just completely ameliorated um, using OER in general, but then also right with the videos, them being able to see 
me pointing at things and moving around and moving my hands and um, just being able to see my body language, I think is a little more comfort comforting for them. When I, when I made vi make videos and add supplements for some of the upper level courses, I don't really know. I don't feel that that, that is necessary for me to use the light board for that. Um, the students, I mean, they, they just have more mathematical experience. They can read words that I write or they can you know, watch videos that I make where I'm not physically in the video and they can kind of learn math that way. But I think it's a little easier for the, for the, um, for the other students that are, you know, just taking one, one or two math classes. It's easier for them for sure to see me in there and to have the textbook at their fingertips and be able to just watch these videos over and over. Can you comment on the reception from you know, your colleagues in the department and the rest of your campus to what you're doing? Yeah, so um, in the department, I'm not the only one that uh, that uses LibreText. I'm not the only one that tries to use, you know, tries to minimize costs for students. So that in general is fully supported in the department and on campus. Um, lots of our faculty um, across the campus have used LibreText for various, for you know, all sorts of disciplines. Um, so there's no, there's no pushback. Um, in that sense, and the other, you know, an an advantage even more so just in the department is that I'm not the only one that teaches Math 104, which is our finite math class. Um, every year we have five, six sections of that, and those faculty, you know, they they share my they they share my LibreText links with students, um, and so those students in those classes, you know, they see they see my presentation of things, but they also see their own faculty's presentation of things. So they're seeing things in multiple ways. And so it's not just a resource for me and my students, it's also a resource for all the other students taking the course. So you mentioned that you had done, uh, you collect, you made a data bank of questions. Uh, how did you actually handle that? Not necessarily the construction, but how you uh, distribute them and use it in your classroom. Yeah, so we, um, we we put those um, on on Blackboard, right? So that's not public facing on on LibreText, um, but and then right and then in the classroom, then the students have access to it, and we assign, or at least the way I do it is then I pick problems that I want the students to work on in their groups in class, and I will go around and help them. And undoubtedly, um, lots of students have questions, but also as I'm walking around, I will see groups, you know, with their earbuds in, watching me do an example that's similar to what's on their on their homework. And I'm like, all right, well, if that's another question that I don't have to answer, um, that's great. If they can figure, use their resources to figure it out, um, yeah, then it, then it works really well. The data, I mean, the database of questions, like that was a joint effort between five of us in the department. Um, and, you know, we'll have to update that and edit that um, as things, you know, as the semesters progress. But uh, that, that was kind of a big hurdle um, to getting, to making this class fully bookless for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, but that, may, that actually made my job a lot easier that I didn't have to come up with 15 or 18 or whatever exercises for each section. And the reason I ask is that we have this new homework system uh, that, that's in place. Uh, so uh, if you're interested in um, putting it into the system, you can still keep it uh, protected um, so that uh, it's not widely distributed, but it still it folds into the uh, the infrastructure uh, and you can also utilize if when it, if it's not necessarily so useful in your specific class but in lower classes that uh, it has a web work infrastructure that you can then um you know have oh, yeah. calculate and prove things and, so, and that's based off of equations not just numerical results right so that could be very useful in order to uh, to introduce a bit of flexibility in terms of the conventional. Yeah, I mean I mean that would be great for you know in particular for the work that I want them to do before class. Right. Those problems are generally uh, fairly similar to what's in the video. So, you know, if I could just integrate in a few problems and then they would know right away that they did them correctly or that they didn't do them correctly, um, that would be, I mean, that would just make the platform and the, and the experience even better for me and for them. Actually, I and mean, we wish, we should talk a little bit about that, uh, the, 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 whether we have a pilot or not. I and mean, we have lots of things going on and uh, the, I take a very comprehensive perspective on how to uh, apply the ADAPT homework system. And we've, we're working with um, um, I'm just wondering if I just randomly put everyone in waiting room. Uh, 
I'm going to do that. Yeah. Um, I, <laughs> uh, it's, it's already kind of late, so they should have, uh, they're just making life miserable. Um, so we've been uh, working with, uh, um, with the web work people in order to uh, uh, have an updated render. So it's very efficient in how it operates. And if, you, if you've ever used web work, uh, yep. you may find it quite painful uh, to operate. Um, uh, and what we've done is we basically gut it. So web work just renders a problem and, and does the analysis, but the, um, um, but the, uh, uh, all the other stuff is, is a centralized system uh, that is able to use a, a variety of other technologies. So you can use MyOpenMath or iMathAS, or you can use um, uh, H5P, which is not so applicable for your class, but it's, uh, it's the same infrastructure so that you can still use it uh, and you can embed it into your textbook. Um, so you can actually make your textbook a bit more interactive. Yeah, it, it that would be, sounds like, yeah. that sounds like that would be great. Um, that would be, that would even streamline the process even a little bit more. Yeah, we should talk uh, in more detail once uh, this fight goes done. Um, the... Okay. Yeah, they're just, it's kind of crazy at this point. Uh, uh, this is. Okay, um, it, it, unless we have anything else to say, let's uh, let's put ourselves out of this misery. Uh, and, and that was not your talk. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, I think we've seen the most levels of reprehensible activities here. We haven't seen porn yet. Uh, so, or we saw dancing, but that wasn't quite it. Uh, but they could be quite ruder. Now I yeah. have a much better understanding about what this is. <laughs> I've never <laughs> seen this before. Uh, so, uh, unless there are any other questions or something that, that uh, Jennifer wants to address, we can close it off. Um, no, I mean, this was meant to be informal. I just, I just wanted Ron John to be able to talk about his his work so um, yeah thanks yeah, thank you very much i, I mean I, i've obviously interacted with you via email but never really had the opportunity to talk informally or formally to at least um in and, um i look forward to uh further discussions yeah i'm gonna be teaching that the 104 again in the fall so if i mean if i could try out that uh the problem uh, Oh, that, be, oh yeah by, by then we'll have it well honed up uh, I'll, you'll hear more about it in in emails and notifications uh, and, I, and i did talk to 11 we we presented a couple weeks ago at a, 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 a meeting and uh i think he said he had an updated version uh, that we were looking into bringing in uh, i don't know if it's going to be of particular interest uh, for for you uh, um so uh, sounds good Sounds good. Yeah. Have a good day. Can, enjoy yeah, enjoy your you in, Indiana, probably cold day uh, <laughs> and such. So thanks. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Take care. Bye. Cheers. Bye -bye.